I have now the big pleasure. Yeah. I have the big pleasure to introduce you now to Ines. She's a Palestine, born and raised in Israel, under a very good unconditional love from her father and her mother. Study her way, do her way, went up to Cambridge, make her PhD, and she's completely commitment about what? When I meet her, I was thinking, oh, she's a very aesthetic person. She's full of empathy and compassion. And then she say, but my whole life is, I want to find out what's behind technology, what's behind this. So she's 100% dedicated to technology. She says, it's not only about, oh, this is the next thing, I want to be 100% in. When we exchanged and we talked about and, and say, hey, what would be your dream if you could rid off of every worry? You would go to the beach, you would go in the forest. She said, no, I want to solve problems. And I want to solve problems of the most pressing needs of our society. And the last 100 years, there was an enormous way of innovation. And 2,000 American engineers get asked what was the most important one. Was it the airplanes? Was it telecommunication? The 2,000 engineers make it very clear the most important innovation of us was electricity. So Ines is taking care about justice to have an access to this great innovation of energy. And she took an enormous responsibility in a way to say, I take this responsibility in my way and I will go forwards and take care when I'm founding my company like everyone who joins my company, I'm responsible. And once I hear from a great Americans to say, responsibility means to respond to your highest ability. So let's be inspired by Ines and her story. Thank you very much, Mr. Counselor, for the kind introduction. Hello, everyone. I have a question for you to begin with. How many of you would use renewable energy instead of fossil fuels if they cost the same? Raise your hands, please. Keep your hands there. <laughs> would you still raise your hands if it costs 50% more? Probably not. That is the main reason that we are not implementing renewable energy fast enough. It is the cost. The good news is that this is changing. But we need to innovate faster to make progress towards a sustainable energy ecosystem using renewables and low emission technologies, particularly for the underprivileged. 1.2 billion people in the developing world don't have electricity for cooking, lighting, studying, or medical treatment. This urgency drives an increasing dependency on polluting and emitting fuels like diesel, which usually comes at premium prices. Moreover, the impacts of climate change are being felt most keenly in these developing countries. I focus on zero carbon emission technologies like hydrogen and fuel cells that are instrumental to reduce emissions and reach the decarbonization targets outlined in the Paris Agreement. Why hydrogen? Because hydrogen is a powerful fuel. It is abundant and you can produce it from water. Uniquely, when you burn it, it doesn't produce any carbon at all or any harmful emissions. A few years ago, during my PhD studies, I patented a technology that produces and stores hydrogen-based energy. With my university friends, we investigated its commercial potential. And until then, I thought that I was working on an exciting technical challenge. But then I realized that the really exciting thing is a lot bigger. It is when you can harness the power of technology to solve social and economical challenges to reduce environmental damage or act as an important tool 
to accelerate human being progress. Today, many countries in Africa, Central Asia, and Latin America are increasingly adopting clean technologies like solar and wind. However, the intermittency of renewables when the sun isn't shining or the wind isn't blowing risks the reliability of consistent supply. Our breakthrough came when we realized this was the real issue, and energy storage technologies could provide millions of people with a sustainable supply of energy by storing the energy efficiently and enabling people to use the energy on demand. This led to the founding of H2Go Power, which is developing safe and reliable hydrogen storage solutions, which deliver clean power generated from renewables with zero emissions at low cost. Currently, we are piloting a plug-and-play container unit in Nigeria, where 60% of the country isn't connected to the grid. We are tailoring the technology to provide a continuous power supply to hospitals. Because when blackouts occur, access to medical care, emergency treatments, or even life-saving operations have to stop. If instead of power cuts lasting more than 12 hours a day, the hospital had a consistent supply of the energy, the hospital would be able to remain open for twice as long and offer 50% more treatments. The impact of continuous supply extends to touch different life aspects that enable growth for vulnerable communities. Businesses can have more hours of lighting, which means Longer, is our, longer hours of operation, enhanced productivity, and improved income. Longer hours with electricity at home will mean that children can come back from schools and study without kerosene lamps, leading to a better educated generation and ultimately economic growth. With our hydrogen storage technology, we estimate the cost of renewable production will be reduced by 22%. And these savings could be passed on to customers, giving them a cheaper source of energy. The technology allows CO2 emissions to decrease by 1,500 tons annually, whilst providing enough energy to run small five hospitals. So it is supporting economic growth, efficient use of resources, and deep decarbonization we so urgently need. We're also beginning to work on using this technology to provide a completely new form of energy for transportation and industry, getting us closer to reducing urban air pollution and scoring high in the battle of climate change. I asked at the beginning who would favor renewables over fossil fuels if it were the same price. With new technologies and our collective efforts, I hope that soon we will all be in a position to raise our hands. Thank you.